Ember Ward is a game of liberating fire with democracy. But can you beat Ember Ward with only one tower? Seems impossible, uh, because it is. But the strength comes in numbers, and strength of one kind of tower times one, two, all of them is something else. And I will try beating this game on the hardest difficulty on the hardest map this far, and I'm all I'm allowed is one single tower of all of them. But before we unlock hard mode, aka heroic mode, we must beat the game on casual mode. So I start the game for the very first time, see if this challenge is even possible that I put on myself in theory, and let us begin. Welcome to Ember Ward, a roguelike tower defense deck builder and Tetris. I feel like I just summarized my childhood with flash games. Goddamn. According to the rules of my, uh, our challenge, when we start a map, we use one tower that we placed. And besides this tower, the only other tower we are allowed to place is exactly the same one. Means if I decide to place this AC-130, the only other tower on this map is gonna be this AC 130 times 150. That's basically the rules done. The game starts this way. You start at this point right here. Choose a character you think seems suitable to you. I think I will take this one. Afterwards, you choose a starting deck, which adds three towers to your deck. Haha, <laughs> if only you knew all I need is one. But also, it gives you a small pool of Tetris blocks that you will need to defend your base. And because why should I stop here, we also get a relic that improves something. And as long as it's not this relic right here, I don't give a shit, because all other relics are as useful as using a baseball bat to turn off your brake lights. And so we find ourselves on the first map. We build a little bit of defense. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't say I have any idea of what I'm doing here. Thank God this game is forgiving for now. But basically to summarize you my first learning curve, we start making a funnel. For this, we simply just try leading all the red lines into one as soon as possible. And of course try to make it a maze. That makes me question if it's worth the distance to go to the fridge. Besides that, of course, we are keeping the rules in mind to defend our small flame from waves and waves of enemies. Some small, some bigger, some way too big that are also fighting my towers head on to make it even harder on us. And that we will do by spamming the shit out of our tower, which in this case is simply gonna be this one right here. A small but very effective drone. I am proud of you, my little assassin. But besides that, the only thing I would add is that we try using our Tetris blocks as best as possible and oh look we already killed the boss well that was easy enough but that was casual mode and the easiest map of the game so I very much expected this to work now we have heroic mode so one of our checkpoints is getting fulfilled we are in the hardest difficulty but before we start with going to the hardest map I actually have to beat it again because apparently that's the rule of this game. Back into the map, we go and see how much harder heroic mode is. It can't be that bad, right? Right? Okay, let me tell you a bit why this challenge has taken me 10 hours! There will be more later. But everything at its time. In heroic mode, enemies ha <laughs> seem to have more HP. The waves are getting bigger, and it might be me. But I'm, they might be also a little bit faster. And bigger enemies are coming more often as well. So besides the fact that my dumbass just finished the basic difficulty and now got bitch slapped into yesterday, this is gonna be far from over. Especially, here I have noticed that this game is basically a game of chance. Because the very start of the game is gonna have more effect on your success than anything else. Similar to generational weapons. Well, it really doesn't matter what blocks you get later on. Neither do towers. Mostly because of our challenge. But psh, 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 psh. as long as you start with a good starting selection, and by far the best one is this one right here. Straight blocks. Fight me! And in addition, if we find my favorite tower to use for this challenge, which is the drone, as it has generally a great mix of price and damage ratio, what the fuck? Very spammable and highly effective, and to bring everything to a great synergy, this relic right the fuck here. This relic makes Zeus ask himself why his credit card gets bombarded with transactions. This is what I genuinely love, but generally, this is one of the only ways to to beat heroic mode for me. Yes, heroic mode. Not the desert!
Welcome to what I call my personal fucking hell. Let me try to summarize to you why this is so hard. By just following me on this adventure to my certain fucking doom. We start by choosing a character. The merchant. We start in a desert and build our defense and here we already notice what the difference is with our character. The merchant is similar to our starting character, just that he starts with blocks that have money runes on it. Guess what? It makes you gain more money. Incredible. I know. But also, similar to the stock market, your prices change like a motherfucker. It means every time you are broke, the prices are low. And every time you have money on end, the prices jump so high, you might as well sell a kidney. But sometimes it happens that the tower is half off and you have so much money that you don't even know where to spend it on anymore. So generally, a high risk but higher reward character. And as you should know, I am a degenerate gambler and so I had to pick this character. Remember how I said that the rules are simple? Let me add some. Something. Besides to make the game a little bit more possible, especially because the later levels are incredibly stressful, I will allow the upgrade where the Ember Ward itself attacks enemies in a teeny tiny... It's a huge radius, but it only does one damage on rapid fire. Because it's almost like the heroic mode is almost made in a way that you are supposed to have a challenge with the entire upgrade tree unlocked. Hmm... So the only other tower allowed is basically the thing we're protecting itself. Call it self-defense, I don't know. And why are the levels so bad? Well, if you look closely, we are on our way through the desert, where I even tested if other towers might be more suitable, like the Devastator. Call it Cloud Kill, because besides smoking paint, that motherfucker ain't doing shit. We figured out that the drone is a good boy, and he is the only right decision. But besides that, the desert has so many differences. First of all, the maps are quite a bit harder, in the sense that either the way seems super short, or that the enemies are coming from all directions, or making a good maze is similar to getting a PH. And geometry. If that wasn't enough, the map had enemy zones where we cannot place anything unless we build in the fighting phase right next to it, or just build close enough in the building phase to be unlocked as soon as the wave comes, still slowing us down greatly. Then we also had healing totems and my personal fucking favorite, literal obstacles. We literally had to pay to get rid of them to build a better maze. These maps didn't really make it harder, they just made it really fun to play as they were huge maps where I was able to spam the literal fucking shit out of everything. And probably the most important part, the enemies. First of all, HEALTH! Like, how much do they have? No matter what I did, if it wasn't 1000 drones, then it wasn't enough. At some point it was basically only big enemies that blew up when not killed before they could self-destruct once low enough, disturbing my entire defense or sandworms that literally went underground becoming unhittable. And my personal fucking favorite, these fuckers right here, throwing weapons at my towers, basically turning them off and making them useless for a while. But that wasn't even the problem. They are fucking fast and have way too much HP. So this screen was my usual ending to a one hour run. So. We have a couple of difficulties. How do we go what against it? Well, that? first of all, I got better at making mazes. Probably the best thing I did. From there on out, I spent all the towers when playing the merchant when they were at least reduced in price, collecting as much money as possible in the meantime. Then we arrived at the boss, pushing it back to the end of the train and... Oh. The boss had a heart attack! The 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 bo the the but the final wave. Ah, he's already dead. <laughs> the fuck is that? Hold up, let me check. <laughs> Look, I fucking did did it. Wait, it was casual. Wait, what? Did I did I? No. Did I actually accidentally play casual? I mean. <sighs> I feel so dumb now. No wonder it was so easy. Shit! <sighs> I'm so dumb. As you can tell, I was very fucking upset because I just thought I beat the challenge, but oh well, apparently I didn't. Back to the challenge. I've already played every character and can say with confidence that this mofo here is the only one that is worth a try. And it makes it so much better that not only do we find ourselves a straight block build, we also start with a drone again. Sadly, no good relics, so no brake lights for me. But who needs that shit? So we go to our first map, and as you can see, straight blocks and drones are one hell of a combo.
After more and more levels, the one or other devil deal and a literal war crime of a defense we made. God damn! We found ourselves back at the boss, this time 100% sure, this is hardcore mode. So started as usual, small defense, make a maze as long as possible and defeat wave after wave to charge the cannon to hit the boss. No! This cannon does not count as an extra tower. Fuck you! I thought about it. There is no way I'm beating the boss in one round before the cannon is charged. Fuck you! So we managed to defend wave after wave with minor damage. Shoot the cannon right into the chest of the boss a couple of times and piss him off enough to come at us. From there on out, all we had to do is survive the insane wave of near endless amounts of enemies. Stock up on our defense as all the money we had had to be spent ASAP. With each step the boss came closer at us, there was more sweat dripping down my face as I knew this was one of the best runs I had. If I cannot do it now, I will not be able to do it ever. Shoot, fuck's sake! And in the final moment, I watched the health that go down. Was so fucking close. And we win. No more death screens, only success. We finished. Like and subscribe, leave a comment, and go fuck yourself.